What's up YouTube? I have another lead code SQL problem for you. This one's part of SQL 50 and marked as easy, but it does have some tricky concepts in there. So let's solve it together. I think this might be a medium. Let's get into it. So this one's called list the products ordered in a period. It's numbered 1327 and it's part of SQL 50's advanced string functions regex clause section. We have two tables to work with, one called products, one called orders. Products has a product ID, product name and product category. Orders has a product ID, order date, and how many units were ordered with that order on that date. Our task is to write a solution to get the names of products that have at least 100 units ordered in February 2020 and their amount. We turn the result table in any order and the result format is in the following example. So for this example, we have a couple of orders with the product ID just being an integer, the product name being in here, and then we have more metadata for that product, a product category. So lead code solutions would be a book. Tools of Stringology would be a book. HP and Lenovo would be laptops and lead code kit would be a t-shirt. In the orders table, we would have information about which product which was ordered on which date, in what quantity. So we have a unit there. In this case, product ID one, which is the lead code solutions book was ordered 60 times on February 5th, 2020. So the output would be product name and the unit sold. So quite simple, actually just a unit and the product name. So how many times was each product sold in February, 2020 while having at least 100 units sold ordered. So that's what we'll have to take care of. Can return it in any order. So let's just get started coding this up. We will be selecting product name from this table. Actually, we have two tables. So we have products and orders. So let's select from products. Because we want the product name in there and the amount of units sold, we will need to join the two tables just because these columns are in the two different tables. So yeah, no different way of combining them. So products join orders. We can use the using keyword and say using product ID because both tables have product ID. So in MySQL and PostgreSQL, I believe we can use using to sort of shorten that join condition and not say products.product ID equals orders dot product ID. So it's just another way of writing the same thing. First way was a bit shorter, but I'll leave it at that just to make it work in any sort of SQL dialect. And yeah, selecting from those two, I'm using a regular join here because we are interested in products selling at least a hundred times. So we're not interested in listing products that have sold zero times that have not sold. If we were interested in products that have not sold, then I would be using a left join just to make sure we list every product regardless of whether they have sold. So whenever you want that uh, pretty much include zero values or include things regardless of whether they appear in the other table. So if they don't appear in orders, there hasn't been an order for that product that product hasn't sold. That is the, the logic. If you wanted to have that, then you would be using a left join. But because we're interested in using products, in listing products that have sold at least a hundred times, I'm just using a regular join. But yeah, could be using both. A regular join is actually more performant here because you're selecting less rows. Or you're joining less rows than you would have to. So yeah, using that, I think, this is one way you have to be careful about the input statement because it's easy to forget something. The product should be ordered in February 2020. So we're only interested in things that have been ordered in February 2020. So yeah, I'm adding a where filter here to make sure the order date is between 2020, 02, Oh, one, so it's always year, month, day in SQL. 
and the last day of February, which in this case is another thing to stumble upon interviewers at this point. If you're good at SQL and data analysis, you should probably catch this. I think I didn't catch this once and ever since I'll catch this every time. February can be a month with 28 or 29 days, depending on the year. 2020 is an even year. Even years can be leap years. Leap years have, happen every four years. 2020 is one. So lead code questions a lot of the times have or sometimes have February 2020 as an example, just because they want to test whether you would think about this being a leap year and February being affected by this. So in this case, February will have 29 days. So I'll say order date should be between 1st of February and 29th of February. So this will take care of that. Another way to easily take care of that without remembering that and sort of doing that manually and just pretty much hard coding the date values in there, you could say, and I think, I don't know, I might prefer that is you could extract the month from order date and the year from order date. So it'd be like month from order date. That should be two for February and then do the same for year and say year should be 2020. Or you could do date format, order date, and then specify the format of the date. So I think here would be percentage Y, percentage M, dash percentage M. This pretty much encodes we want to get the date, but we all only want to have the, we want to format it to have the year as four digits then a dash and then the month in two digits. So this will give us that. And if we check for that to be 2010, 2002, it means the order date is in February, 2020. So this is really all I'm doing here. So yeah, I'm doing that. You could use either of those. You could use the extract as well, but you'll have to have a solution for that. This one, works this one would work if it was 2021 or 2020 just because it just extracts february i think for this case you could even use left of order date because it's a also treated as a string i believe and you could say left seven so the left most seven characters of order date would be 2020-02 so you'd also get what I'm getting with this date format function. Yeah, so took care of that. Let's take care of, I'm sort of jumping here, but wanted to make sure we have that in place. We want to get the amount of units sold. So this will just be sum of unit. Very easy, but we'll have to make sure we include this where filter. And since we want to sum, th uh, sum something up, we'll have to group by product name to make sure we're summing up for each product and not overall. So this one, I think in this case it should work. You should be careful here because products might have the same name but a different product ID. So it could be a different Lenovo laptop which has product ID 7 or something. But yeah, let's run with that, see what it gives us. We have one more thing we need to take care of. This one on, yeah, forget that as I sort of restructured my query. But yeah, the other thing we need to take care of is having at least 100 units sold. And the way I worded this is I actually used having having at least unit of 100. So that's what we'll need to take care of. We also should rename this sum of unit column to just unit, which we can do, no problem, and return the result in the order. So 
make sure to often go back to your problem statement to see whether you're missing anything. And at the end, before you sort of hand over your code to the interviewer, just make a final check. Did we check everything that's in the problem description? In this case, we want to get the names of products, check that have at least 100 units ordered. We don't have that yet. In February 2020, we have that. And their amount, we have that too. Turn the result table in any order. We don't need to do anything here. So only thing we have left to do is have at least 100 units ordered. For this, we can use having to filter on this unit value after it has been calculated. So I'll say having some unit should be greater or equal to 100. That's another thing you need to be careful about. It says have at least 100 units. If you were careless and would just say greater than 100, it would be the wrong solution. And people can be quite strict about that because yeah, you might have you might as well have been careful here and get the right solution. So yeah, make sure to be very detailed and careful about these filter conditions, read the question carefully and you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm running this again to see what it does and to show you what it does. But yeah, I've covered having a lot on this channel, but it's more of an advanced concept that usually you, would you wouldn't have in an easy question often. But yeah, here you'll have to use having because you want to filter on this sum unit aggregate function, this sum, and that should be at least 100. So in order to filter on that value, it has to be calculated first. And you use having to indicate that you're filtering on something that is still being calculated by the query. If you use where, you filter before calculating or aggregating something. So we used to where to filter to orders only in that date because that's what we wanted to apply the sum function to. We basically just wanted to, instead of using the whole table of orders, just use a smaller section of the orders table just February 2020, and then we want to apply our sum function to sum up orders for that product, for that product, and for that product. So after we've done that, we want to filter on those sums that we calculated, and that's why we're using having, because having indicates that we want to filter after we already did something, did some aggregation. An aggregation is just pretty much reducing a number of values to a single value. So it could be a sum, it could be a count, it could be average. And that's what I mean when I say aggregate functions. So yeah, I think that's been a good explanation for that. And yeah, we have the expected output. So might as well submit this and see whether it, accept it is accepted. And yeah, it is. So you can use a couple different ways to filter to the date. I think here it's really about seeing that it's a leap year, then being able to use having and just establishing that join, but that join is a pretty straightforward one, just uh, joining on product ID. So. That's been it for this question. We have a couple of questions left for SQL 50. I have a playlist on all lead code SQL 50 solutions on this channel. So make sure to check this one out. Apart from that, you can sub to the channel to get these videos in your home feed or subscription feed. And yeah, I hope I'll see you in another video. I'll see you there. Bye bye.